So let us try to understand the concept of structures. Let us first take a look at the syntax of the structure. The syntax is as struct followed by the struct name, then open curly parentheses and the ending curly parentheses. In between, you can mention the members. And there is a semicolon after this closing parenthesis. This is very important. The semicolon, generally people forget to uh, use this semicolon that gives a syntactical error. So different data types, member 1, member 2 may have different data types. The data type along with the member. This is how we can write a structure. Example can be a struct of person. So struct is the keyword. Struct followed by the person is the structure name. Character name, int, some CIT number, float, salary. So some uh, random values we are taking here, random examples. Uh, name is an array of 50 characters. So we can have an array or we can have a struct within a structure. We can also have another structure variable. So what are these things? Let us try to understand. The keywords what we are looking at is size, memory, value altering, accessing members, initialization of members regarding the structure. So in case of structure, the keyword struct is used to define a structure. How do we identify the structure? How do we calculate the, uh, uh, the total memory required? That is the size of the structure, uh, a structure variable. When a variable is associated with a structure, the compiler allocates the memory for each member. So memory is allocated for first memory, uh, first member as well as the second member. Uh, in this case, uh, 50 locations of memory is allocated for character because character takes one byte each, so it takes 50 bytes, and then two bytes for integer, and then four bytes for uh, salary that is of a floating point. So it takes four bytes. Likewise, for every member, it allocates memory. The size of the structure is greater than or equal to the sum of the sizes of its members. Generally, it would be equal to. So uh, minimum, it is equal to the members sum the sizes of the members and each member within a structure is assigned unique storage area of location that is very important the memory is not common memory every element is having independent memory unique memory and then altering the values of a member will not affect other members of the structure so as the members are allotted with different memory locations unique separate memory locations then obviously altering value of one memory location does not affect the other memory location so other member will not get affected now how do we access structure uh, members individual members can be accessed at a time using dot operator or arrow operator dot operator in case of general structure variable uh, elements in case of operator of uh, arrow is used uh, where you are using a pointer to access the elements of the structure several members of a structure can initialize at once so that is for the initialization of members so once again Example, struct, character name, in cd, and now here you can see person 1, comma person 2. This is how I can uh, declare the structure variables. After the structure definition itself, here itself I can declare the structure variables. And I can have a array within the structure, <coughs> sorry, in the same way, array of structure elements. Now, each, this p of 20 means, 20 variables each one is of structure so 50 plus 2 52 plus 4 56 memory locations into 20 that would be the total memory allocated for this p of 20 array of structures structure can have an array in the same way i can also have array of structures so <coughs> likewise we can have for example uh, this is global declaration before main i am declaring so this is an example of global declaration all the functions and uh, the main program will also the main function will also be accessing this particular structure so struct person person 1 uh, because it is like struct person is the name person 1 person 2 p of 20 like this also i can uh, declare these structure variables simple example so 
instead of writing again and again this uh, struct distance uh, something like this struct struct name i can make use of type def this is the way how i can uh, declare the uh, structure uh, of the struct variable and then i can uh, use it to declare the variables like struct distance d1 d2 instead of doing it again and again what i can say is type def struct distance and i am giving the name it as distances before the semicolon no this is not a variable here uh, this is the name given for this complete structure so instead of writing every time struct distance now simply i can say distances d1 comma d2 d1 is nothing but the structure of this thing so how much memory location d1 or d2 will get uh, how much memory it will get uh, one integer one float so 2 plus 4 6 like that So this is one example program to add uh, you know sample code for structures. So we are taking it like you know feet and inch uh, two distances. Uh, so I am taking a structure distance having integer float uh, integer feet and uh, float in inches and distance 1 and distance 2 are two variables and sum is an another variable. So uh, like reading the first values first distance entering in the feet. So I need to access this feet which is belonging to the distance 1 so the variable and the structure member variable name dot structure member so that's why distance 1 dot distance 1 dot feet and ampersand symbol in front of it this means storing at the address of this particular uh, member in the same way for inch i can take it like this now the second distance also read like this now to sum up these two things I am taking another variable sum. So, sum feet is first distance feet plus second distance feet. The feet values of first distance and uh, feet values in the second distance. In the same way for the uh, inch also. So, like this, uh, this, this should be in the second line. Uh, it has been added into this uh, comment line. So, we can have it like this. If uh, there is some change to be done from the inches to feet, when I need to do it, when the inches are greater than or equal to 12, then uh, I convert it into feet. Like this, we can make use of it. A example uh, where we are using the dot operator to access the structure members. In the same way, here I am having a pointer, pointer to the struct which is name i have taken it as a name and then another uh, structure variable harry so here again uh, making use of the same thing like example so person i have taken pointer to the person and person one in case of person one i can make use of floating uh, the uh, dot operator and in case of pointer because i am using a pointer and to access the element that is the member of the structure i need to make use of arrow operator that is what you can see here in accessing while printing as well as while reading that is scanf and printf both makes use of arrow operator because it is a pointer to the structure whereas in the other case it is simple structure variable it can make use of dot operator we have used the address of this variable into this pointer so instead of using person 1 dot h now i will say person ptr and person uh, person ptr arrow mark h because it is a pointer now the most important thing that happens is uh, c supports dynamic memory allocation that means during the runtime i can request the compiler to allocate memory the disadvantage of static memory allocation is that later on we cannot change the sizes but c language also supports in dynamic memory allocation while executing the program if some memory is required we can request through a proper instruction to allocate the memory and how do it handles it makes use of certain uh, functions like malloc calloc free and realloc so uh, in case of malloc uh, as the memory is being allocated randomly obviously we should have some mechanism to access the memory nothing but we need the pointer so malloc 
will return the pointer of the allocated memory. Hence, we need to have a pointer variable every time to hold the address of the allocated memory using malloc. And how much memory is allocated? So, that we need to request using mentioning the byte size. That is the type of the values, the type of the data type of the uh, value you would like to uh, handle. So, here in this case, if I am using integer, so size of integer into 100, that means 100 integer values I would like to hold array of 100 integer values because it is an integer so it should point to the integer the pointer so it is typecasted to int pointer malloc something like this in the same way calloc is changing the size and free is uh, after using in the runtime because the memory is allocated in the runtime again it should be returned back so that is done making use of free pointer this is a very important thing if you don't return back then this memory will never be used once again it can never be used once again because the pointer gets expired once the program gets closed the the block of the function the block of the code wherever you are using this gets completed later on you won't be having access to this pointer in the other sense you won't be having access to the memory location so you should make use of this free pointer to free the memory that gets allocated okay 